Hello friends! My name is Marina and this is Rapunzel Fiber Arts. So today I want to show you what I'm working on. Um, I originally had filmed this before I started working on this project and did like a proper intro before I started spinning this fiber, but unfortunately that got lost and accidentally deleted. So I'm filming it a little bit after the fact while I'm in the midst of the project just to show you what I started with more or less. So a couple weeks ago I picked up two braids of fiber from my friend Sadie over at Sadie Spins. I got a six ounce braid of this rainbow thin sheep's wool. Um, this is actually six smaller braids. They're attached together, but if you were to unbraid this, you would have six smaller strips of fiber, um, which is fine. I think I might do mini skeins with this and keep them fully separate and then do something fun and stripey with them. But in the meantime, I'm working with this, which is her blue colorway, which she calls Nautilus. And originally I had 4.3 ounces of this, but most of it is now spun up on my wheel. So I wanted to show you what I have left. This is just some of the top, which I have divided and then I stripped, so I stripped it the long way into quarters so that the fiber is a little bit thinner to work with. I find that pre-drafting is a lot easier that way. So I'm spinning this. The next clip will show you some of the spinning process and then we will come together and reconnect when it's time to ply. But again, I just wanted to show you this fiber that I'm starting with. Um, I'm gonna just be spinning the blue in this video. I kind of wanted to experiment and get used to the fiber before I jumped in with the pretty, pretty rainbow. So yeah, we're gonna be spinning this blue fiber today. Again, I've already spun some of it, but you're about to see some more of me spinning it. And then we will show you the finished yarn or the finished singles and then get to playing. All right, friends. So here I go spinning away at this fiber. You've seen me spin lots. So I decided to just show you the fiber kind of building up on the bobbin in a time lapse while I talked to you a little bit about how spinning this fiber went for me. Overall, I really, really liked it. It helps that it's one of my favorite colors. I love blues and purples and this kind of blue that some of the darker colors almost, almost are purple really, really called to me. So I loved the color, but I did notice as I was spinning it that it wasn't quite as easy to draft as my hand prepped fiber, which is just the difference between mill prepared and hand prepped fiber. Um, something specific that I noticed was that there wasn't a lot of crimp in the fiber, and I don't have a ton of knowledge about how mill prepared fibers are prepared. Um, I know some details, but I've never, I've never been to a fiber mill, so I don't have some of those details. So I reached out to my spinning group and asked them if they had any insight into why the fibers were so almost ironed. And they told me that I was right. They were ironed. Part of the process of getting fiber like this prepped is that they need to kind of control that crimp so that it doesn't tangle up the machines. At least that's what I understood from what my friends were telling me. Um, and so they heat treat the fiber to get some of that crimp out, which makes it makes it easier for them to process, but affects the spinning as well. I think that this will probably poof up considerably into a thicker yarn when I wash it. Um, that's just based on if they removed all that crimp when you add warm water, like I do when I wash my yarn, it's probably going to to increase that crimp again and that will make the fiber uh, poof out and make the yarn have a bigger diameter. 
That's my hypothesis. We'll have to wait until I wash it to see if that is true or not. I won't get to washing it in this video, but I will do it in a video and hopefully we'll remember to mention that so that we will know if my hypothesis is correct or if I'm, I'm wrong about this particular, particular um, guess. So again, overall, I really liked spinning this. It was harder to draft than hand prepped fiber, but I did really enjoy it and don't have many complaints. All right, friends. So I have finished spinning up this blue fin. You can really see those places of darker pigment on the fiber and how they are going to make some really nice dark streaks in this overall kind of turquoisey tealy yarn. And I'm very happy with it. I just finished spinning this, so I'm going to give it probably a day to sit on the bobbin and relax, or not relax, but um, kind of let that, let that twist sit on this tensioned bobbin for a little bit, and that'll make the plying process a little bit easier and prevent me from having, having a lot of active twist in my singles while I'm trying to ply. Um, there will be active twist, but letting it sit on the bobbin like this for a day or two helps make plying a little bit easier. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do chain plying for this or if I'm going to do a center pull ball and do a two ply, but whatever I decide, I think it's going to be really pretty. Um, and I really enjoyed spinning this. Again, this was some blue fiber from Sadie Spins. Her website is Sadie Spins Yarn. And I, I really enjoyed it. It was beautiful fiber and it's gonna be beautiful yarn. So stay tuned and I will show you the plying process once this bobbin has a little bit of time to sit. So I will talk to you again soon. Hello friends. So it's been a couple of days that this fiber has been sitting on the bobbin as spun singles. And I've done some thinking, and what I think I'm gonna do is a chain ply, which is just like a crochet chain, but you make it really, really big and add twist, and that makes a natural three ply that you only have to transfer from one bobbin to one bobbin. You don't have to break it into thirds or anything like that. Um, which is pretty fantastic. It's a really nice way to, to get all of your yarn into applied yarn without losing any of your singles or having to do math and a lot of finicky stuff at the end of this game. So that's pretty fantastic. That's my plan for this. And then I'm probably going to get to spinning the rainbow that matches this fiber. Um, and then figure out what I'm gonna do with that as a knit up or crocheted up or woven item. Ooh, maybe a woven thing. That could be really good. We'll have to see. But anyway, I wanted to discuss that with you real quick, um, talk to you about my plan for this yarn before we jumped into plying. Hi friends. Kind of at a weird angle right now, but I really wanna show you what I'm doing here while I ply so that you too can figure out how to chain ply. So I'm going to slow my wheel down a little bit so that I can, I can really show you how this is done. So you see I've got a loop here. I'm pulling my yarn through that loop and then letting the twist in. And as I let that twist in, it becomes plied. So again, I've got a loop which I am pulling another loop through and then letting the twist in. I'm still controlling the twist with this back hand so that none of the twist gets, gets into my yarn back here because that could be a little bit chaotic and disastrous. So again, I have just got this loop here. Oops, I've lost it. I've got this loop here. I'm gonna just hook this yarn and pull it through in a loop. You see I've got a loop here and then I'm pulling that through. I've got my yarn supply behind me. 
I'm letting the twist back, but I'm controlling it so that it doesn't get into my yarn back here. And then I'm just continuing that process. This is a learn skill. When you first start, it will be tricky. But again, I've got my loop, which I'm pulling another loop through. And then letting my twist back. All right, friends, so here I have set up at a little bit of a different angle as I apply so that you can more easily see what exactly I'm doing with my hands. So again, I'm letting that twist in and then pulling one loop through the existing loop and then letting that twist in. And I'm just repeating this process over and over again, which is just how plying is. Um, I've got something on the TV to keep me entertained. And other than that, I'm just sitting here keeping my hands busy plying. So I wanted to chat with you a little bit about, about strength with chain plying. So chain plying has a bit of an issue with that where if you break one of your plies, it can unravel kind of easily, but it does take a lot for, for one of your plies to break, um, either a fray or a, um, a tear. But as long as you are on top of repairs, that shouldn't become a huge issue as long as you're able to kind of do whatever mending you have to do to prevent it from becoming a bigger issue. As long as you're on top of that, it shouldn't be a problem. I remember there was a Ply Magazine article comparing durability of differently plied sock yarns, and I think the chain ply was the weakest, but only by a little bit. So it definitely is a weakness issue, but it's minor and not something I'm super concerned about with this project because I don't ex anticipate it being a very hard wearing project. Um, I think this is going to be, I, I'm not sure what it's going to be at this point, but I don't think it's going to be socks or something equally hard wearing. I think it's going to be a fairly, a fairly easy um, fairly light wearing project. So we'll see, but I'm not super worried about that at this point. All right, friends, we are back. We have our plied yarn. It looks pretty fantastic to me. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. Not really. Oh, well. It is beautiful. I love the variegation in this yarn and the different shades of blue that we have throughout. I wanted to show you the last join I made just so you can kind of see what that looks like. So it's two loops attached together. Here I've just untwisted it a little bit. It's two loops joined together with a third strand running alongside them. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm describing there. So there are two loops through each other and then a third ply that just runs alongside them. But you can't really see that in the final yarn, especially once it's worked up into something. It's very subtle unless you have a very thick and thin yarn. If you had big chunks, it would be a little bit more easy to spot, but for a consistent yarn like this, it's pretty, pretty um, invisible. So that's fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and get to skeining. Hi friends, we skeined it up. Um, I'm really, really happy with this yarn. I think it is beyond beautiful. Um, part of that is just because I love blues, but this fin spun up really nice, very consistent. Um, it's got a little bit of a curl to it, you can kind of see, but washing will get that out, no problem. I, 
I'm very happy. I think this yarn worked up just beautifully. I'm very excited to get started on the six ounce braid I showed you at the beginning of this of this video. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you what we what we managed to work up. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think we did great and I'm excited to get on to my next tour de fleece spin. I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but this is my first tour de fleece spin. So this is what I've been working on the first couple days of the tour. If you're not familiar, Tour de Fleece coincides with Tour de France, which is a cycling competition. Um, it runs for something like three or four weeks. And while that's going on, spinners often uh, treadle along with the cyclists or pedal, depending. Um, so I've been working on this during Tour de Fleece, which is not... I haven't been spinning particularly more than I than I already spin. It's just been with a little bit more I've been thinking about Tour de Fleece. I don't watch it. My boyfriend's family is very into cycling, but I'm not passionate about it. So I just do the spinning, but I think it's it's a fun thing to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed me ranting a little bit. And I hope you enjoyed learning about how I spin this yarn. I hope you have a great day. I hope you get some good crafting in. If you liked this video, please hit the like button below. Um, if you have anything you'd like to say, please comment. I love, I love talking with you people. Um, we're friends after all. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you are so inclined. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon. Bye friends.